Okay, welcome back. And it's always a, a truly distinct pleasure to spend time with a friend of mine and a friend of yours who has literally been pulling back the curtains to let us see the man behind the curtains for over half a century now. Uh, he is uh, too much a gentleman to go around carping about it. He just continues doing what he does best, and that's to tell us what the symbols are all about, what the big game is, and how the plans are being carried out right in front of our collective eyes, and so few people seem to notice, and even fewer seem to care. Uh, It's amazing. Jordan Maxwell. Hi, Jordan. Hi there, Jeff. Uh, Always happy to be back on with you. It's uh, it's amazing. It's just amazing to watch this all unfold. Now, I I know when I started this program, and I think you were on in the first year, I think, of the program, nineteen ninety four. We, I don't even think, with all of your wisdom, I have to ask you this, and everything you knew, did you, did you expect to see the world so totally and quickly transformed by global Zionism and the big money elite? That hang out I, in the I, city of London. I'm just, I'm just amazed. There are just no words that I have to explain. Uh, and, and the one thing I really did not calculate at all is how America would just crumble. On roll the, over, on the, crumble, on, roll over, play dead, lie down. Play dead. Yeah. It's all over. Finish. America, land the free, home of the brave. Forget it. It's over. <clears throat> Crawl on your knees and. Uh, <laughs> groveling, groveling to the eye yep. on the top of the pyramid, which is the Zionist Rothschild eye uh, leering over everything. And do, all you have to do is watch the APAC uh, <laughs> abomination. Every year they have their convention. This is an international uh, event. Of course, it's a, a, a power of a foreign government exposing itself in the raw, on the right on the television, to watch our politicians go down there and lay on the ground in front of uh, the American Israeli Political Action Committee. It might as well just be called the Is- Israeli Israeli Political Action Committee because most Americans who call themselves Israelis are in 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 essence Israeli firsters. They'll put Israel above the United States, and they have shown that too many times to count. No doubt about it. Uh, you know, um, my wife and <clears throat> my wife and I. Uh, went uh, on, a, on a trip uh, back east, and uh, this was back in 1967-68. And when we were flying back from New York to L.A., uh, uh, how, you know, the big plane, uh, I think it was probably, I'm not sure what it was, but it was a very large plane. Mm-hmm. And we were, the, we were about the only two people on that plane coming back to L.A., um, that was not from Israel, <clears throat> and, wow. uh, and and so I began talking to you know doing the flight. I got up, walked around, talked to people, and found out mm-hmm. the whole plane were all uh, Jews, Jews from Russia. They were all Russian Jews, and they told me that they uh, that they were from Russia, but they immigrated to Israel. And that Russia allowed them to go to Israel, and they said, when we went to Israel, we did not get off the plane. The plane was then rerouted from Israel immediately, directly to America, directly to New York. And so huh. I said, well, then, you know, do you have uh, visas and everything? I said, no, we don't need that. We were told we don't need that, because there are many, many planes uh, taking Jews out of Russia to huh. Israel. They don't uh-huh. get off the plane. They immediately are uh, re- refueled and go directly into America, and they don't huh. need any passports. They don't need any uh, paperwork, nothing. It's all huh. taken care of. And so I went around asking huh. the different people, and they said, yeah, no, uh-huh. it's all been taken care of. Everything, everything's cool. We just uh, stay on the plane, and we go directly to America. And they said, well, do you have passports? And, no, we don't need that. I, I was just, I was amazed. I said, well, how are you doing this? How many, how many people? And I said, we don't know. All we know is that a plane loads full of them. That was just, a, that was like a little wake-up call to me back in 67. And, uh, well, see, they oh, were yeah. building, they were building Cyanum back then. 
uh, okay. basically basically agents of the Mossad by extension, and they're kept in line and trained and indoctrinated, and uh, they hold their meetings uh, every weekend at the synagogue, and that's the and, way they're, uh, they're And you don't have to worry about it because you don't need any. They don't need any paperwork. You know, just come on in. You don't no, need they're, any paperwork. They're the chosen. And, <clears throat> incredible. And then uh, about the same time, back in the, that era of 67, 68, uh, I took my brother down to the airport, uh, LAX, for some reason, and we were down there, and there was a long string of stretch limos. I'd say at least a dozen. That's why they stood out, because they're all stretch limos, and they're all in line. And I was thinking, my God, who's in town? Who is this? Mm -hmm. And as we passed by, each one of the license tags said KGV-1. The next one said KGV-4. Next one, KGB-6. KGB this, KGB that. There was 12 of them, at least 12, and each one had as a license plate KGB and a number. And so I, I was amazed. The long black limos back in the 60s, late 60s, with KGB license plates on them, and there's at least a dozen at the airport. They're not going anywhere. They're picking people up, which tells me KGB has got a hell of an operation right here in L.A., Wow. I mean, it's incredible. Wow. And, uh, you know, and, and to add to that, uh, you know, back then, in, in, the, in the mid to late 60s, I found out that the mafia had their own license plates in California. California makes life, special license plates for the mafia. I mean, I was amazed really? at this stuff. Really? That, that's that's yeah, mind-boggling. I mean, I've got stuff yeah. I could tell you that would get me killed, but I'm telling you, there is an incredible amount of stuff that the people in this country just don't know. And I've been listening to this stuff and being in the company of these people who are showing me things that are mind-blowing, and I cannot believe how much people couldn't care less because it hasn't got anything to do. This kind of knowledge has nothing to do today with anything of any real importance. It doesn't like have anything to do with the, the, the Lakers. All doesn't, all the no, that's right. Games right. That you give children. These are children's games, you know. When the adults don't when, when the adults want to talk about adult stuff, they send the kids out to play ball. Yeah, and so they do. They go out and play ball, and so that's why they have uh, the government is giving you football games and basketball and and baseball and tennis ball and golf ball and ping pong ball and kick a ball and soccer ball. It's just a ball game. Send the kids out to play ball. And so, you know, even even when you're in uh, corporations, you know, you're a team player, and you're not playing ball. So, I mean, I understood. I, I, I began to realize our company was in the hands of communists back in uh, 1967 with 12 limos saying KGB. My God, what does that tell you? And then, uh, you know, so I've, I've been looking at this stuff for over 50 years, and at this point, I just... I give up. I don't know what to say, and I don't even care to say much anymore anyway. I just give up because it's, you know, trying to educate the, the world today to how the earth works. Well, it's you like know that... trying to empty the Pacific with a cup. So That's a very good analogy. We don't... It's, it's not giving up out of any self-centered reason. It's giving up in the face of reality and, and pragmatism. We don't have it. access to the media. The media has co-opted everything. It is the ultimate brainwashing tool. We don't have access to the education process unless we homeschool, and that's a chore in itself for most folks anymore right. that want right. to do it. So we've been effectively just wiped off the board very carefully, yeah. methodically, cleverly, brilliantly, really. We have been marginalized and then removed from the game. That's right. So that America, the land of the free, home of the brave, and all that silly nonsense, they don't even play that stuff at ball games anymore. I used no. to wonder why is it only in a ball game, a, a baseball game, they they uh, they sing praises to America and the, and the, you know and all that kind of thing. They don't even do that ball games anymore. I don't think that's the only place you'd hear anything about the, the you know the, the America, the land of free and home of the brave, and all that stuff. And then they say play ball, yeah, play ball. I'm so, I'm so sick and tired of watching Americans play ball. So I just gave up. I mean, I, you know, I'm 72 years old, and I've been struggling for seven, for at least 50 years doing what I do. 
mm-hmm. realizing that every year it's not getting any better, it's just getting worse. This is not an issue of being negative. I want to I want to underscore that. And all of you listening know that. This is not a, a This is not a paradigm of wallowing in self-pity and being negative about things. This is an issue of reality. It's what it is. And yep. you can choose to look at it and recognize it, or you can just reach for the remote and click to the next ball game. That's it. Grab yourself and another uh, beer. Uh, 